Our story begins at the Cord Industries outpost in Antarctica. Lieutenant Carapax is excited to welcome the CEO, Victoria Cord. She has been looking for a particular object for the past 15 years. Two weeks ago, a mysterious orb was unearthed in that area. Dr. Rivera sounds a bit skeptical about it. But while the men cut through the giant sphere, Victoria says she can feel it now. This is the legendary Scarab. In Palmera City, we meet Jaime Reyes. He's returning home after graduating from law school, and his family is waiting at the airport. Before they meet him, his dad reminds everyone to keep their mouth shut about recent bad news. Let the boy enjoy this moment for now. Jaime sneaks up on them and almost overhears all the plotting behind his back, but a warm group hug makes any suspicions go away quickly. Uncle Rudy shows up in this flashy ride. He refuses to get out of the car because airports are full of governmental traps like face recognition and body scans. Not exactly the kind of guy who has nothing to hide, it seems. They take Jaime to have the tacos he missed so much. Everyone is still trying hard to keep their secret, except for his sister, Milagro. She lets him have one bit before blurting out that they are about to be homeless. Their landlord tripled the rent and gave them three months to pay up or get out. As Jaime tries to come up with solutions, he begins to realize this is not exactly recent. The eviction may be a new threat, but there's a lot more they have been keeping from him, like his dad's heart attack or the fact that they lost their business to Cord Industries. The thing is, Jaime is the first raise to go to college, and they didn't want him to interrupt his studies and come back to help them. That night, Jaime tells his sister that he is going to save the family. Now that he has a degree, it's only a matter of time until he gets an awesome job, and then it's gonna be better than before. They're gonna be rich and live in a mansion. Well, part of that prediction kind of comes true. He is in a mansion now, just not living there exactly. This is Victoria Cord's mansion. One of them, of course. Jaime and Milagro are part of the cleaning staff. Jaime has learned the hard way that awesome jobs require experience in equally awesome firms. Inside the mansion, Victoria is also facing a problem, and her name is Jenny. She is Victoria's niece. Jenny plays the TV commercial narrated by Victoria herself. It presents the one-man army corps. Just like the name says, it turns a single man into the equivalent of a battalion. The high-tech abomination connects directly to the soldier's brain. Completely ignoring Jenny's disgust, Victoria rejoices at her killer baby. At the same time, Milagro decides she deserves to use the good bathroom for a change. High Maid is in charge of keeping watch, but he is more focused on eavesdropping on the family drama. Jenny is saying that Cord Industries shouldn't be making weapons anymore and that her father would never approve this. Ted is Victoria's brother and the former CEO. At the mention of his name, Victoria loses her temper. She says Ted almost destroyed the company that she built and then vanished into thin air. This is her company now. There is nothing little Jenny can do about that. A very loud sound interrupts the discussion. It's the sound of Milagro flushing her job down the toilet, and she is taking her brother with her too. Feeling bad about it, Jenny tells Jaime to meet at Cord Tower later. She'll try to get him another job in the company. Milagro begins to mock him as soon as the rich girl leaves. She compares their dynamics to Maria Del Barro and her sugar daddy. Cord Tower is an extravagant spectacle in bad taste and bad manners. Front desk lady finds it hard to believe that Jaime has an appointment with Jenny Cord, and it might not be a good time, actually. Jenny is stealing Dr. Rivera's key card to get access to the lab. A majestic beetle is connected to a bunch of devices. Jenny doesn't think twice before putting that in a greasy box. When Rivera reunites with his dinner, his joy quickly turns into terror. The scarab is gone. As he sounds the alarm, Jaime spots his rich savior coming down the elevator. And this is where we see how much he sucks at job hunting. Someone should tell him that the hunting is not that literal. Jenny is very annoyed at his level of despair, but when he vows to do anything to be of service, that gives her an idea. 
She gives him the greasy box and tells him to guard it with his life. She also tells him not to open that under any circumstances. You know what's gonna happen now. He takes the box home and everyone says he should open it. They're a bit disappointed at the giant bug, but Jaime's hysterical fear of the new boss is totally worth it. They begin to throw the scarab at each other like a ball. The moment the thing lands on Jaime's palm, it begins to glow and move. The family pauses to admire that outlandish marvel until the bug decides to go for his face. Uncle Rudy tries to help, only to get fried by a mighty lightning bolt. Jaime's transformation begins, and it's not anything like the TV commercial. It's a terrifying process. But once it's over, he looks like a blue version of Spider-Man. A robotic voice begins to spit a bunch of commands and warnings before the suit takes off with the boy inside it. Apparently, this is a system check and a thorough one. The suit puts him through all kinds of dreadful situations just to make sure they're ready for anything. Also because it's so fun. When he finally gets back home, the exoskeleton is gone but the scarab is still attached to his back. So he decides to go back to Cord Tower and demand some answers. To his surprise, Jenny is also in trouble. Victoria's goons are after her now trying to retrieve the artifact. At the Reyes dining table, Jenny tries to explain the situation. The scarab is a sentient weapon and it chooses its own host. That's all very flattering but Jaime is more interested in how to get it out now. Sadly, Jenny can't help him. The scarab belonged to her father, but no one knows where he is since her mother died. Their best lead now is Ted's secret library but they'll need to break into Cord Tower to get the key. And that's when Uncle Rudy's paranoia comes in handy. He is proud to present them El Chapolino. It's a machine that he built himself to mess with security systems. Jenny and Hai may make it into the tower and grab the Ted watch that belonged to her dad, while the security guards call Lieutenant Carapax and tell him the system is getting jammed. But when he gets there, the scarab won't let him hurt Jaime. Carapax has no choice but to activate the Oomane Sea. Jaime's exoskeleton is also ready to rock and roll. This time, it asks permission to take over and Jaime is too scared to deny it. The full capabilities of the Blue Beetle are revealed. They are impressive, but Jaime decides to take control again when they get too close to murder. Carapax makes sure to show him this was a mistake and Rudy is forced to sacrifice his beloved Chapulino to save his nephew. Once the battle is over, Jaime talks about what just happened over there. When he let the Scarab take over, it was like they merged somehow. Now he knows that the artifact even has a name, Kajita. Jenny sounds a bit worried when she concludes that the two of them are becoming symbiotic. At her childhood home, Jaime asks if the Cord people won't come looking for them here. Jenny says this place is empty for years, and she is the only one who knew the smartwatch is actually a key. Using it to open a complex set of secret passages, she leads the way into a very unusual place. It turns out that Ted Cord was the secret identity of a known Palmyra City superhero. They called him Blue Beetle. But the truth is that the Scarab never chose him. Just like his sister Victoria, he reverse-engineered the artifact in order to build an artificial exoskeleton, which is just a fancy word for a super suit. But the difference is that Ted used it to become Blue Beetle and fight injustice, while Victoria wanted revenge because their dads will snubbed her and Ted inherited the company. While Rudy begins to hack into Ted's stuff, Jaime goes upstairs to freshen up. He is astonished to see the cuts in his face are glowing, and in a few moments, they are completely healed. Maybe this superhero thing is not so bad after all. Not to mention, there's always a pretty girl in need of assistance. Jenny opens up about her family problems and how much she misses her parents. Ted was a great guy, but his wife's death changed everything. One day, he simply left and never came back. Jenny says her house is full of stuff, but Jaime is way luckier because his home is full of love. Just when they're about to kiss, Rudy comes in to announce he has cracked the password. He tells them about a guy named Dan Garrett. 
who was also chosen by the magic bug. He was Ted's professor. This is how Ted got to study the thing and learn how it works. Apparently, the scarab is a hybrid organism, full of alien tech. Once it chooses a host, it begins a deep entanglement. Killing the host is the only way to get it out. That means Jaime is stuck with that bug now. He storms out in distress, and his uncle goes after him. He says he should look at this as a gift and use it the best way he can. Their talk is cut short by the sound of helicopters. Jenny says it's Victoria, but they just fly past them. That's because they have another target, the Reyes. Realizing that Jaime tries to activate the exoskeleton, but it doesn't seem to obey voice commands. Then he remembers what Rudy said before. The scarab will always protect the host, no matter what. So Jaime simply jumps off the balcony, and it totally works. His body is covered in alien tech way before it could hit the ground. And now Jaime can fly home to save his family. When he gets there, Victoria is commanding dozens of mercs from the chopper. The whole thing is a trap to lure him here and she's glad it worked. Her men begin to fire at Jaime, but he is bulletproof. Curious about his abilities, Victoria gives the order to target the family. Jaime keeps talking to Kajita, as if they were two people sharing a body. He puts his powers to good use against the mercs, but always insists on non-lethal weapons. Kajida keeps suggesting more permanent solutions, but at least for now, she obeys the host. It's not hard for the symbiotic duo to fight off the men. But unfortunately, Jaime's dad has a weak heart and the terror is too much for him. Victoria takes advantage of the distraction to capture Jaime. By the time Rudy and Jenny arrive, the damage is done. Victoria has the nerve to wave Jenny a cheerful goodbye while Dr. Rivera is clearly having second thoughts about his job. Sadly, Jaime's dad doesn't make it. In the morning, the Rise are devastated by the double loss, but Nana makes sure to remind them that their boy is still alive. There's plenty of time to grieve after they save him from that monstrous woman. So Jenny takes them to the old Cord mansion and introduces Ted's armored aircraft, the bug ship. It's full of very nice toys they can use against Aunt Vicky. And to Milagro's surprise, Nana seems to know her way around anything that operates like a machine gun. She doesn't explain much, but Milagro's mom says one day they can talk about Nana's past. Meanwhile, Jaime is taken to Pago Island. This is where Cord is developing the OMNAC. Victoria needs the Scarab to complete the code and launch her atrocious product. And she is not in the least worried about the fact that the procedure will be lethal to Jaime. Derfa Rivera says they could study the thing better while it's still attached to the host. But Victoria wants that bug out, and that boy gone immediately. Carapax is also there, ready to become the first one-man army. Not too far from them now, Jenny and the Rice are going through a bumpy landing. Fortunately, the bug ship does its name justice. No matter what extermination means you employ, it refuses to die. Like a true insect, Victoria's soldiers keep firing at it until it becomes wiser to run. Uncle Rudy is having the time of his life. Not only is he fighting power in the coolest way possible, but also it seems like Ted Cord had his kind of sense of humor. The cloaking system, for example, is nothing like the invisibility of the Marvel ships. It is named Bug Fart for a reason. Once the coast is clear, the intruders come out of the giant bug and split. Jenny and Milagro find a secret room where Victoria is keeping hundreds of OMAC units. It's an army of armies according to her own marketing campaign. All of them are directly connected to the Scarab now, while Victoria yells at Rivera to accelerate the transfer. Jaime then sinks into his own mind. His dad is there, and he tells him to stop fighting Kajida and embrace his new identity. While the ladies are spreading explosives all over the generator, Jaime decides to listen to his father. The transfer is complete before the explosives go off. Jaime only survives by fully merging with the Scarab. But now, Carapax is wearing an operational OMAC. To make this worse, the original Scarab is now rebooting. Dr. Rivera finally decides to switch sides and help Jaime. 
but his new life as a good person doesn't last too long. Jaime is ambushed by Victoria's men and only manages to get away because Nana takes them all down. When they get to the bug ship, Jenny and Milagro are missing. Rudy and Jaime start looking for them. Jaime finds Milagro pinned down by a couple of guards. And now the Scarab is done rebooting, so they're about to regret that. Jaime easily fights them all off, but when Carapse gets to him, it's a different story. Rudy tries to intervene and gets blasted. At the same time, Victoria is about to leave the island. She has Kenny at gunpoint and thinks this makes it safe to deliver the villain's speech now. So she begins to talk about their family and how they kept overlooking her talent. Jenny cuts that crap short with one of her dad's toys. While the chopper goes down, the two cords are now wrapped in bubble gum and back on the ground. Jaime is so angry to lose another loved one to these people that he forgets his restraints. He attacks Carapax with murderous intent. But this time, it's Kajida who stops him. Since they were fully merged, she has developed stuff like empathy and compassion. She also got to know her host better and finally understands what he meant when he kept saying he is not a killer. And besides that, she also peeked into Carapax during the upload. He was a child soldier, hopping from abuser to abuser, until Victoria took him in as a guinea pig that she could poke into as much as she pleased. Jaime agrees to spare his life, and we see that Rudy is actually still alive. Carapax is deeply puzzled by his enemy's mercy. When Jaime finally reunites with Jenny, Victoria is furiously shouting at Carapax. She commands him to take them down, but he's not her puppet anymore. Overloading the OMNAC, he makes the entire island go up in flames. Jenny and Rice get away in the bug ship. Sometime later, we see her as the new CEO of Cord Industries. She plans to run the company the way Ted always wanted. She also gives Rudy a new truck and promises a brand new house for the Rice. And this is the end. This was a recap of the 2023 movie Blue Beetle by DC Studios, starring Zola Maraduena and Bruna Marquezine. So, who is the craziest person in this story? Would you like to be in Jaime's shoes? Let us know in the comments below with hashtag CinemaRecap. Until next time.